you know, when doing a bigger project, sometimes you just got to do that little one job, you know, it won't take long. So welcome to my new segment. It's called Five Minute Jobs. My 3D print time lapses suck. It shouldn't be that difficult to do a decent one, like those cool ones that Wild Rose Builds does. You really need to time the extruder head so it's out of the way and take a photo at the start or end of each layer. And luckily, there's actually a macro built into Kura to do exactly that. So all I need to do is make up some sort of a connecting wire to trigger the camera from the controller of the 3D printer and at the same time add that macro into my code so that in the print it does the right thing. Now my printer is controlled by a Jewett Wi-Fi board and as far as I can tell it has no external switches. What it does have is output pins which can output a pulse width modulated signal between zero and full voltage which I'm guessing is probably 5 volt or 3.3. I'm not really sure. And I can't be bothered spending hours working through the manual. What I do know is I can use one of the pulse width modulated outputs. The camera's remote release is under this little cover on the side. And it's just this one here. It's a little 2.5 millimeter jack. Robot Room's got a set of good instructions of how this works. And the camera senses resistance, different resistances being either nothing, start focusing, or release the shutter. And all it wants to see is a short between these two pins and two and a half K resistance. So I've got one of these little beasts. It's gonna take the pulse width modulated current, switch the micro switch, and I'll just put my little resistor on the output to the camera. Should be a five minute job, huh? Now a lot of people do this wirelessly, but I really don't see the point. The camera has to be within about a meter of the 3D printer to take the photos anyway. A cable like this only costs a couple of bucks. Save to worry about batteries and stuff. Now the first job is going to be to work out which two wires I need. Now first the red wire. Okay, it's no use to me. It's the tip. Now the yellow wire. That's the third ring. So I need yellow. And now black. Okay, so black and yellow are the two I want. Since I don't need the pre-focusing, I'll just go straight for switching a 2K resistor through between ring three and ring four and see if that works. A few minutes later. Okay, well that failed. That didn't work at all. I'll have to think about it. Three weeks later. Since it didn't work just shorting the two pins, I figured maybe the problem is that the camera's not looking for a transition from an open circuit to 2K. When you push the shutter button, then it should transition from 36K to 2K. So I faked the 36K with a 100K and a 51K in parallel. Gives me about 33 or so, that seems to work. And now when I push the button, it takes a photo. It also starts and stops the video. So that's then my wiring diagram. This is my plug that goes into the camera. I'll put the two resistors to make my roughly 36K across them. Put the 2K resistor in series with this micro switch and trigger that off the printer. Later that same evening. I've now wired up all of the resistors under this heat shrink, connected it up, powered up the little board, and when I short from power to the input signal, it triggers the switch, which in this case is gonna turn off the recording. And touching it again restarts it. That whole trigger system's working. Now I just need to connect it up to the power supply and the input signal of my printer. Hey, cool, I got mail. Now I'll need a box cutter to open it. I guess like most of you, I got quite a collection of like cheap and nasty box cutters. That's a high quality aluminum carpet knife and some cheap and nasty wallpaper knife. Well, Marcus saw me chopping away at something and he didn't like it. So he sent me one. So there we have it. Rather than mucking around with this crappy little plastic knife, Marcus has donated two of these really nice Japanese metallic knives to the cores, which lock, don't slide around, high quality, 
Thanks very much, Marcus. I appreciate that. Now I know that this whole board and its wiring out to the camera works. Next, I gotta get it working with my Duet Wi-Fi. So first off, it needs five volt power. I found a pin head here, which I think was for like a control panel or something that I'm not using. It's got five volts on it. Next thing, I have to pick up a control signal. I need to go looking for, for that to see what I can use to control it. A lot of people use the spare fan head here for fan three, which I'm also not using, but I think my other fans are set up for 12 volts and therefore the board's jumper to provide 12 volts for fans, whereas this only needs five volts. So I'll probably pick up that signal from somewhere else. Connecting the trigger into a pin on this header. Well, it took about an hour on the phone with my best man Hamish, who designed this printer, to work out how to reprogram the number four heater, which isn't being used, using the M307 command to actually use it as general purpose I.O. But I think I've got it working now, so let's try it out. I added two lines into my post processor in Kura. I'm using their pre-packaged time lapse. So that automatically at the end of each layer moves the print head to the corner and moves the bed to the front. Then I can use this command to trigger my camera. Wait a half a second. That first script triggers the camera but leaves the pin active. So I had to add a second script just to turn it back off again. You stupid idiot! Thanks for watching. 